Hey, what's going on? Welcome back, Beowulf Nation. I am Beowulf, back at it with another video. 2019 Yamaha GP1800R. Woo! This is my first solo ride running the Reva Racing Stage 1 kit on my GP1800R. See how it runs. I, I have to do a little bit more research about the break-in period because I thought it was a 10 hours, but last time I went out, it wasn't reaching the highest, higher RPM, like it would show up on the dash. So I don't know, maybe it breaks in at 15 hours. Um, I brought the remote with because it's kind of confusing. Uh, you can lock it where it can't be started up or it puts it in uh, L mode. And uh, I'm at the manual with it. And I will just play around and see what happens. Um, but I'm Jen down this way. Man, it's like almost 90 degrees. Nice, hot day. And we'll see what we see going down there. Maybe I'll head down a little down that way, uh, the opposite way from once. Um, so we'll see what we see. If you're new to the channel, I'm Beowulf. I do jet ski. Technically, this is a wave runner. So we got jet ski wave runner videos. Um, so I'm in the Intercoastal Waterway in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. If you're not familiar with what region I'm in. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Subscriber. Make sure you hit that bell notification if you haven't already. And let's get this video going because, man, oh, it's nice. I want to cool off on it, do some twisty turns of this thing, and uh, see what we see. Another day in paradise.
your life. Uh, it's a hospital right there, so that's a helicopter probably taking somebody out or somebody had some emergency. I've seen it now like two times, uh, but there's a real strubby, heavy wind. You can tell how the helicopter's landing. I'm not a helicopter expert, but the wind's coming this way, so when the helicopter's landing, they got a tight area in there. Uh, give those people great props and that kind of stuff. That, that has to be hard work because you're trying to move fast to save somebody's life and also, too, try not to crash the helicopter. Hard stuff to do, no question.
was freaking cool. Man, I was booking it down here. Whoa, man. You could hardly see them when I zoomed in. But man, I was booking it. They're landing at the Myrtle Beach Airport. How freaking awesome. Oh, I hope the GoPro looks cool. The hard thing when it's a wide angle, I mean, they were like right underneath me. Oh, that's so loud. Man. Oh, I was racing. I was like, I thought they're flyby. They're just coming in to land. How freaking awesome. That's I tell you, I'm living the dream down here. You come out anywhere in the water out here, you have no clue what you're gonna see. Now, I'm not really an uh, expert at planes, F-16, F-18. That's what they look like, um, but it, it's hard to tell if it's the Air Force, Navy, or however it is. But the cool, interesting fact is Myrtle Beach used to be an Air Force base before it became an airport for bringing people in. And it's pretty cool. And man, how neat. There were some like military cargo planes flying in yesterday. If you've seen the video, but man, how cool is that to be right underneath? Ah! Awesome, awesome. That was like, I remember I was a little kid. Interesting story I'll share real quick. So my dad, when he was his roommate in college, uh, after college he became a fighter pilot for the Navy and he used to land on aircraft carriers and stuff. And then he was, after he retired from the Navy, he was uh, flew like American or United Airlines. And when I was a kid, huge G.I. Joe fan. Like I want to be a fighter pilot so bad. My grandpa was in the Army Air Corps uh, back in World War II. And then he became a major in the Air Force once I uh, became the Air Force during, that had been around the, uh, like kind of the Cold War era. Uh, when he was doing that. So I remember when I was a little kid, now I'm kind of jumping, I'll tell you this whole story. So back when I was a kid, I was a huge G.I. Joe fan. And my grandpa was already retired then, but he still had connections to uh, O'Hare, or Chicago O'Hare, they had an Air Force base, or military base, or whatever, when I was a kid. And I got to take a tour there, and I remember when I was a kid, we had a G.I. Joe themed birthday party. And I remember like, my friends and all of us, we thought we were gonna be flying planes, jumping out of helicopters, it's just little kids, you know, you just keep dreaming. But uh, it was pretty cool seeing all that. But the interesting thing is, so he was um, my dad's, I think it was my dad's best friend through college and whatnot. So I was a kid, I wanted a pilot's license so badly. Like I wanted to fly. And my parents were what we call, this is not what happened, but I totally 100% recall this. And I, he would teach me back when I was like real young, get a pilot's license, which I don't know what the rules are with it, but whatever I, I was, could have got training when I was a kid. My parents were never real cool with small planes. They always thought they were real dangerous. Like when I was a kid, I was deprived. Like when you see the kid, young kid that's 10 years old that was on the RXPX and the Sea Dew, and he was on the Yamaha Super Jet stand up jet ski, I never would have been allowed to do something when I was that age. My parents, like, I kid you not, put me in a bubble. I had stuff I wanted to do, I was just never able to do it. Um, but yeah. So when I see that, so that's what, what, what else I'm getting at is, um, so when I started racing, doing like form, uh, Formula BMW and all that, it was like the closest you could be doing flying a fighter plane except for it's on the ground and you got G-Force. And interesting thing too, I was um, sponsored for, I think it was one year or two years, I was sponsored by NASA Space Camp. So I got to do the whole training, uh, what people go through there and actually at the NASA Base camp, I think it was in Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama. They had a facility there that I got to stay at and see and all that. It's the same place where they um, train like the Navy fighter pilots, all that. I think they had the actual plane. It was used in Top Gun there and it was cool. They had a whole like the old uh, fighter plane simulators and like just crazy stuff. And I got to go in the G machine, all that cool stuff. Uh, so I never got to live that dream. So when I see stuff like that, oh man, I just go crazy. I saw the little dots and I'm just like, boom, jet down here. And I was hopefully get a flyby. I had no clue they were landing, um, but that's so cool. I hope you guys enjoy it. I mean, this made my day. It made my day.
but I have to tell you, whoa, man. After having this tune, this is like, my hair is probably just like growing it out. But I have to tell you, since doing this tune, this thing is a monster. It's, it's so much fun to ride. And I'm planning on doing the Riva Sponsons on it, which I think will make it even handle even better because uh, these aren't adjustables on here but this thing is just like it was fun to ride stock and now where it's at and it just it really gets up and goes uh oh man something just jumped right over there every time i come out here i swear why is everything jumping around out of the water it's like i'm a freaking magnet for who knows what out here. um but yeah man if you're definitely in the market and you got one of these and you're trying to figure out what you want to do First thing you gotta do is do the engine uh, breather kit for a must, uh, cause you don't want all that oil going circulating back into the stock intake, or if you have an aftermarket one, getting that into your supercharger. But definitely, you have to do the tune. Um, I heard mixed things from different people. Definitely, I love I love this speed. And I've heard all these people say this thing like sucks choppy water in the ocean. I have to tell you, man, this thing is a lot of fun. And there's a lot of people that keep on messaging thinking like, I regret buying this. It was the smartest thing. I'm glad I held off and got the R model instead of the past ones. Um, I'm, I'm happy, with, like extremely happy with it. And there's no regrets. And to be honest, my only two regret skis to buy was 2018 Sea Doo. GTR X 230, it just felt really underpowered to what my RXP X 300 is. Um, that's a fag. And also too, this thing is so much more fun to ride than my 2018 Sea-Doo RX TX 300. And I regret buying the RX TX 300. It was a lot of fun. This is a blast to ride. And forget those speakers and all those little gimmick things. Um, this is just straight thrill and fun and making sharp turns, fast turns, going fast, straight. It just, it, it feels real, uh, what's the best word? It's like, it feels really light. I felt the RXTX, you felt the weight of how long and big the jet ski was. Um, and it's the same with like snowmobiles. I mean, I had a snowmobile and kind of the RXTX reminds me of like their summit or the really long uh, snowmobiles. And I had a, a couple different uh, skidoo different ones the older one and a brand new one back in the day and uh they definitely rode different between the two and um this thing is a blast and if you're out looking the market purchasing a watercraft jet ski technically this is wave runner who really cares who really cares what you call it it's all the same thing i don't care what manufacturer came up with whatever name i like calling stuff jet ski but technically it has wave runner but not for too long i'm gonna do like custom graphics on this is what my plan is but this thing is just a blast to ride. The big thing is what's different with this to the, to the sea dudes is you sit completely different in this. Um, kind of what I'm sitting in is now, now when you're riding the um, RXPX, the seat is completely different. But you're kind of sitting in this thing with your legs more like up forward is how I've been riding. Then when I'm in the RXPX, my legs are more like this. Um, I don't know if that best is this would show but it's kind of you ride different and um, it's a different seat but I find it pretty comfy I'm still gonna get a different uh, things because I just don't like the white on the seat so you get one a little bit more grippier material this is the carbon fiber really wouldn't say though no, the white's pretty grippy but not like extremely grippy I got a custom seat on the way from uh, jet trim coming for the RXPX so I'm excited about that and I'm gonna do a whole video repairing my RXPX. I don't know if you guys have seen past videos. I got a tour in there, I don't know how. Um, I'm gonna should do a video too of how to repair a Torrent. These are vinyl seats, so I'll show how you repair that without going to a upholstery place. Plus two, I'm gonna redo it, so I'm gonna do a little bit different and it's not like where it has to be just perfect, but I like to show you guys how you can do stuff yourself. You don't always have to go out and pay somebody to do something. So, let's go kind of jet down here we got. We'll see, it's 7.40. We still got a fair amount of light. Maybe we'll head down a little ways this way and see what we see.
lost the contact. Oh, oh man. That would be that would be not good losing the contact. Woo! That is freaking refreshing. on the lens so this is barefoot landing i think this is still north myrtle beach i've lived out here for over like a year and a half i still don't know all the towns names or everything else but uh they got like an alligator adventure thing here that's pretty cool i'll i'll link at the top i went there only been there once and when i came here i have my big canon 80d camera with big uh looks like a cattail uh mic on there and i'm like sticking my hand over in this Usually you think like alligators are slow. I have my hands way over stuff. I wouldn't try at home. Yeah. If you go there, don't try it because you might lose your hand. And this alligator like climbed up the fence so fast because he's like looking at me because the alligator is walking and looked at me. Wow. And luckily it didn't get me, but I may be able to try that next time going there. Maybe in the future I'll go there again. I kind of lay low of going there because I didn't know if they might seen the past video. And maybe won't let me go there because they think I've uh, insurance liability. <laughs> Let me come here. But it's cool. I haven't been to any of these restaurants, but you can tie up on the docks and go there. Comment down below if you guys want to see, you know, I like go to one of these restaurants one night or during the day, tie up and see what's there. I don't know, a restaurant there, another one there. Tie up and uh, it's kind of open. It's free to tie up there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like what the Caribbean or like Florida and whatnot is. Um, it's kind of cool. They like those and eating right out there and jet skis right out front. That's what they call this? Welcome to Dock, Dockside Village. Now, I've never actually walked around there. I've only been to Alligator Adventure and they got, I think it's called the House of Blues and I went to see um, Papa Roach there before I moved down here to South Carolina. I always have not really spent a lot of time here. There's stuff new being built all the time too much about food I'm starving all right to any of my viewers that want to know how like, how do you dock uh, I know people ask that or how you launch and all that I'll show you guys how you dock uh, kind of what I do is right now the water current's pretty strong so um, I'm gonna kind of put a neutral I kind of like don't talk or think this I just know what to do um, but see like you put a neutral and you start pushing but yeah, and forward you just do circles unless you want to get dizzy. But uh, first thing you want to do is grab this line, make a lasso, all right, just got that. Now we got this other one. We do not want this to go into the drip pump. Usually, I'll do is get a little seat back. Put it right on the back there. Put it around like this. Now I'm gonna rig up some of this. I'm gonna buy a different kind of thing because it doesn't stay in place, but um, as well as I like. Um, but here we go, we got the little bumper thing. And I uh, go on approach. You 
Now, like I've said in past videos, this is probably the most, like one of the worst docks I go to, because uh, it's so high. And a lot of people just don't, like I saw a bunch of people that just don't obey the rules of like coming through the snow wake. And that's how you wreck this stuff up, because you're underneath it, and the wave brings you up, and it wrecks your ski. So, um, I try to avoid not going by the center parts, unless I have to. Uh, but here we go. And these, these dock lines you can find on my Amazon store, Amazon.com slash shop. I am Beowulf. Cut it off. Alright. So you want to do is put it like that. No. I loop it just once, just in case the current doesn't pull it out. It's harder to do when you have a passenger on the back, I can tell you that. Good. Then, not keep cut on the bag. You can also find this on my Amazon store. Awesome bag. It's waterproof. You can fit so much stuff in there. And I'll do a review on these, and I'll, I'll pick up um, a Yeti one too. Um, but I have ice in this, instead of hauling, like, you know, you see the videos, every day is Earth Day. So I'm hauling a bunch of water bottles with, and then they just go in the landfill. I just fill this up, put some ice, and have a fair amount of drinking water. But I, I'm going to get, get this in the Amazon store, but I'll get a Yeti one too, and I'll, like, compare how these are um, being put in the compartment, because it does get hot. But these are nice, especially I'd have two different ones, just because I haven't more enough water. Um... It's better, no plastic out here. The ocean and rivers and lakes are already full of enough. Better just to get one of those. All right, now we're gonna do this part. Real easy. Make sure you got good balance too. The last thing you wanna do is get hurt doing this. But it's so, so easy. All right, so we go this. Wrap it around a couple times so she's not going nowhere. And here you go, you tie it up. And that's why I find a different thing. I've seen, see the hard thing is like, you gotta get it right there. And the hard thing is it could come out of place and then there's no protection, so. This is works, um, but I think I'm gonna buy an actual one thing that can go down. I've got a couple ideas and that's what I'm probably gonna get next. Which that'll be on the Amazon store too. Um, awesome stuff. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was epic, man. Fighter planes flying through, tearing up the water with the GP 1800R. And I hope I show you guys a little bit of learning stuff too of like how you ride, how you dock. I'll show you guys too uh, how I put the thing on the boat launch or on the, um, on the trailer. Um, but if you're new to the channel, make sure you give me a follow on Instagram. It's I am underscore Beowulf appreciate that also too if you haven't checked out my my personal website where i have all the i am beowulf merch it's i am beowulf.com we got the hats hang tops t-shirts hoodies and i'm picking up some new merch tomorrow that'll be going to be up soon will be our new gp 1800r t-shirts uh coming out and um so make sure you guys pick that up take a look at the website there i'm beowulf.com also too you've obviously seen i got the amazon store Amazon.com slash shop slash I am Beowulf. A lot of info to remember, but make sure you guys take a look at it. Um, but it's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you guys are driven to win. Remember, crucial, every day is Earth Day. See any trash, pick it up. But here I'll show you guys how you go go on, put it on the on the trailer. Man, I thought there wasn't going to be people here, and then I'll see people roll up through. <laughs> it's so hard. That's why I like going later, is that there's lesser people, and you can film in certain spots. Uh, but there's, like, some kids in the background. So we're going to make some racket, but I'll show you guys how you get this all put together. You guys first want to do is you can unhook it from back here. My goal is not to drop my Osmo action. Because it does not have a floating, it does not float, and I don't want to lose three hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, so here we go. Got that. 
technically you wouldn't even have to unhook them um it's just easier to get that unhooked doing this all one-handed now the next step is to do this thing back so you're real oh yeah so i was telling you guys about this thing Ooh. Alright, so you unhook this, there we go, alright, give it a little push, you gotta be careful, you got a splinter in, or a splinter in your hand, wood, fingers out, not be that good, you need, you gotta have a, I think I care a pair of tweezers with just in case it ever happens, that's why I always wear the gloves, um, so here we go. See you guys in the next one. Peace out, Bay Wolf.